Hello art lovers, I'm here today to talk to you about how I approach watercolors. So I'm going to give you a little rundown on some of the things that I like to use. Um, this is a Stedler Mars Micron 0.5 millimeters. I enjoy using this for drawing. Um, I have a, a preference for the Strathmore cold press 100% cotton but really any paper will do this is just my personal preference I found that it has really good movement to the paint so you can put some paint down and keep moving it around before it dries which I really appreciate and last but not least my beautiful colors from Koi watercolors by Sakura color corporation I really like them um, I've, I've got some handmade colors here too but really my main palette is here and I use them a lot so um, other than that with no further ado we are about to start if you have never been to my channel before my name is Ariana and I like to paint in a lot of different mediums and uh, today we are going to be painting with watercolor and I'm going to take you through the stages that I use to paint an image with some some realism to it so I like to tape this down in case you've never done watercolor before we tape it down so that as the as the substrate dries it doesn't warp where otherwise it would have a tendency to do so um, so yeah, we're going to tape this beautiful paper down and I don't leave a very big border around it, just as minimal as possible. We want it to be as much paint as possible. Today we're going to be painting a beautiful young lady who works in our medical system and She's sporting classic COVID wear uh, with a beautiful handmade um, medical mask. And I found her through Instagram. So her name is Mermaid Bryn. When she is not doing medical stuff, she's mermaiding. So. Uh, now for the next drawing bit, I'm going to actually speed this up so that you don't have to sit here and watch me draw everything. If you're not great at drawing, you can also just use a transfer um, and that works just as well. Now I don't consider myself great at drawing. It's taken me a lot of time to get confident drawing, um, but it's something I really enjoy, so I do. But if you're not interested in drawing, just find a transfer method that you feel would work for you and uh, that's totally fine all right so now that we have our basic sketch down you can kind of see what the image is I hope um, let's see I just lift it up and uh, so you can kind of see this is a lady with a face mask her lovely glasses um, as you can probably tell as I sketch I revise a lot of things over and over and over again to make it come out as nice as I want so as nice as I can get it um, you don't have to do that that's not necessary um, I would encourage you if you don't feel comfortable in ruining your watercolor paper by sketching over it all the time, uh, definitely just do a type of transfer and there's many different methods to doing this and if you are curious about how to do that um, you can comment below and maybe I can make a quick video about that at some point but I assure you if you google it you will find lots of different methods on how to transfer a drawing without 
drawing on the paper because it can wreck it. It can damage the surface. Um, I like to draw so I take my chances but definitely not the smartest thing sometimes. So feel free to do that and then we're going to start with color. Now the color for paintings like this I would always start with the brightest color and we'll do what's called the underpainting. So for this painting she has a lot of peachy tones in her skin so I'm gonna go ahead and take my bright kind of a uh, bright kind of a cad vermilion red and I'm going to mix that quite light and then I will do a wash of that and that is called an underpainting. So. some basic colors down you can kind of see the gradient I've created for the skin and you can see the darker tones that we've put in for the shape like the shadows in her hair um, we can go ahead and um, start laying down some darker tones and I'm kind of finessing some of these gradients that we've made here in her earlobe I can add some purple to create the illusion of depth and around her earlobe here. And don't be afraid of oversaturating watercolors as they're not they're going to dry dark, they're going to dry quite a bit lighter than you see them when they're wet. Right now we're just trying to create shadow and depth and interest by um, creating an interesting layer of color around her eyes and in her, her other facial features. And we can use the water and, and, and a brush without color to try and blend some of these things. So if you find that, okay, I've put, I've put a color down, but it's too much, you can always get more water and kind of loosen it up with another brush. And that's what's so great about using... 100% cotton to paint on is it does not dry as fast as other types of um, paper. So I encourage you to at least try it out, see if it works for your, your style of painting. It definitely is my favorite. Everyone has their own preference and I think that as you paint more then you discover what is your preference and what you like. So this is just mine and a lot of that's just come out of what I've had available to me and um, what I've gotten used to and that's been the Strathmore 100% cotton and I'll try and get a link down below if you would like to try some. Now I'm going to go back to the time lapse and you'll see me layer in some more color. More color. So you can see here we're going to add a lot of cool tones to, so we've done our warms, now we're going to do our cools and kind of give it a sense of balance and uh, give it a sense of more weight. There's like more, more blacks and 
blues going into this part. For the final highlights, I'm just going to take a white gel pen. And I find this is really easy, especially for quick pieces like this where you just sort of want to add some highlights while the paint is still in the process of drying. Um, you might find that you need to touch it up again afterward. And this is a lot easier to do when the paint is fully, fully dried. Um, but if you're impatient like I am tonight, you can do it with a gel pen or with any white acrylic paint. Um, I particularly like Golden's line of acrylics. They're really good for this kind of thing. You kind of see the gel pen bleeding into the paint here too, which is kind of a neat effect. Um, she has a bunch of glow around her glasses, so we definitely want to accentuate that. That really gives it a nice look. And around her eyes. And if you do wait, it, it will come through a lot better <laughs> than this. I might end up waiting, actually. And you can always layer in more color later. It's completely up to you. It's a lot easier to do when the substrate is dry. Um, I just want to mention that all of the things that I'm showing, sharing with you today are things that I developed through exploration and experimentation. I actually have no formal training. I've learned mostly from the help of others and from videos just like this. So, continue to explore and to experiment. And that is basically how I paint watercolors for quick, kind of sketchy, capturing the moment, capturing the feeling. Um, I like I like watercolors for that reason. You can really capture an emotion with them. So I hope this encourages you to get out there, experiment, enjoy the medium, try new things, all that good stuff. Until next time. Thanks to Mermaid Brin for providing this beautiful photo reference of her in her medical mask. And uh, many thanks to the Penticton District Community of the Arts for sponsoring this video.